Hi my friends, another day, another little Bible study. God told me to come in here every day now and share something every day to help you maybe a little bit on this journey we are all in together, this storm that we are facing. Um, I think, you know, storms are very good, actually. If you have peace with God, a lot of things that is good can happen to us when we are in a storm. We learn to trust when we're in a storm. It's like a, a sort of a wake up call. We, we um, start to recognize we are in him where we are in him how much faith we really have how much peace we really have how much fruit in the spirit we really have and I always been fascinated by eagles because they use the storm for their benefit they soar they let the storm, let the storm take them higher. And then, then they soar on that storm. And I think you should do the same. Don't resist this, don't get panic, don't start to try to avoid this because you can't. But let the storm do something with you. Let it be a mirror to your inner man, let it show you things that we all are lacking that we need to work on I think God can actually this is a little bit contradictionary or not contradictionary but it's more radical that God can sometimes allow for example now where all the churches have to be closed down the buildings the body of Christ is never closed down. The body of Christ is not the building. And now you can test yourself. If you fall down because you can't go to church on Sunday and meet your friends and sit there in that safe environment and listen to a sermon and sing worship songs, if your, if your walk with Christ is based on only that, then you've only been drinking milk because now your faith walk, your, your relationship, your intimacy with Christ will be filtered out because you don't have a building to go to today. And actually a church is not a building. We are the temple for the Holy Spirit. I am a temple for the Holy Spirit. I have church now. Church is when you share the word of God with somebody. And I think God, he wants us to build an altar in our home, to find a place in our home where we can kneel down and understand that he's holy and start to have that relationship, relational, deep love relationship with Christ. If you take away the activity, how do you respond to this spiritually? Think about it. I think it's a timing for this because it's right before something amazing is going to happen to the body of Christ. But before God is going to use us to this big harvest he has to restore us he has to cleanse us his bride we have to be ready not even just ready for his coming back but ready for receiving all those millions of people that are going to be saved through us think about it how is your relationship to christ not based on your church, but your personal. Do you survive now spiritually without going to church? 
or are you like depressed or you fall down you have no faith see it's time to build strength alone with God he wants to train us in this God's timing is perfect God doesn't make any mistakes he's a builder he's an architect of something so much bigger you haven't seen yet so don't say anything don't speak anything critical negative just rely on him and let him take you on this journey through this storm where you learn to trust him let him build your faith today and to be to be honest with you i think also people that are working in the church have to go a little round with themselves because we all do i mean some people that want to be at the front they have to question their motives for why they want to sing in the worship team are you called to sing there do you fall down now when you can't sing in a church right now what do you do or you who have a church are you still a pastor a shepherd for your people without the building do you comfort your members do you go on social media and regularly now uh, comfort your members preach to them te start teaching them are you a shepherd why do you want to have a big church has god told you to have a church or is it your dream are you in the right timing to have a church are you led by god to have that position in the body of Christ. I'm just asking, I'm not condemning. I'm just asking questions that I, I ask myself. So I search my heart and the Bible says we should search, search our heart and with the help of the Holy Spirit, he will guide us when we start searching our motives, really, really be honest. It's time for the truth people it's time to, to really see the big truth about where we stand with God. Is it based on your social activity on that church? Do you feel weaker spiritually now? Are you sure that God placed you there or did you, did, did you want to go up there like a performance because you like to sing? See, when I come to churches, I can feel it in my spirit sometimes when people who are in the worship team they are not anointed to sing in the worship team but they they have a good voice and they they want to stand up there and sing but sometimes i don't feel anything because they they are not at the right place i believe it's not enough to say i want to do this i want to do that that have you asked god before you do this activity in your church is it the right timing for you to do that thing that you're doing because what we are dealing with here is holy this is not like a nine to five job where you like yeah i'm gonna do this i'm gonna do that because i want to do it i'm i think i'm gonna start a church have you asked god are you called to start a church are you called to preach do you have everything in your life? Um, oh, it's just a bee. He's not gonna stick me. <laughs> Are you, have you asked God to search your heart? I, I must say, because I take so many rounds with myself that if you are called, if you feel that you want to preach to people. I mean, God can talk through a donkey. He can, he want to use all of us. It's not that. But if you are going to sit and teach people from the Bible, you have to have your motives right. And you have to live a pure life. 
if you have areas of your life where you are living in sin how could you take that position and sit and teach people in the media for example from the bible as a teacher when you are on areas of your life blinded you see a blind person cannot teach or lead another they will all fall uh, in the pit it says a blind person cannot lead i think it's very important that we understand that what we're dealing with is holy that we really search our motives that we repent from sin that we really are cleansed before we go into some form of ministry and we really know that we are called to do what we are doing. I want to say that. And it's, it's a time for really the truth now. So this is good. This is very good. The storm is good. It's doing something to us. So, yeah. Jesus. I'm glad we're all praying now. I'm glad we're starting to lay on our faces all over the world to pray. I have an altar in my, <laughs> an, I call it an altar. I'm not living in the Old Testament, I'm not saying that, but wherever I am, planted if, if I'm in my apartment or I'm in other places on this planet I have a certain place in my room where I kneel down it's a place where I seek God I make it to a, like a holy place you see the altar is not at the front in the church it's where you kneel down in front of God it's nothing special with going to the front you can go to the front whenever you want in your house, in your room. We need to take what we are doing seriously. You see, now God have allowed for us to lose the control completely. It's humiliating for everybody, especially leaders in the body of Christ. It's very humiliating for people who are leaders of businesses or churches or companies we all lose control right now and i think god allow it he allow, allows us to be humble he helps us to be humble because many of us has forgotten who he is now you can take the temperature and see now you're standing on your own two feet you don't have a church building you don't have, have that social gathering well maybe on the internet but I, I mean not in a building because god is not necessarily in a building he's is in here in our hearts and now we are challenged to live by faith what is faith is definitely not a feeling it has nothing to do with feelings faith is the word of god when you read the word of god and you believe it that is faith and you hold on to the word of god regardless of what is coming against you and you hold on, you hold on, you hold on, you hold on all the way till you see it. That is faith. It's not based on anything you feel. It's not based on how it looks around you. It's only based on you taking the word of God and believing it. But you see, faith needs to be practiced. You need to practice how to live by faith. So this is so good because now God has removed the control out of your life 
so you are kind of forced not forced in that way but challenged that's a better word to practice living by faith so you know so you know that the word of god will hold you in any circumstance in this life he wants you to experience that right now that if you rely on his word you will see down the line that the word of god kept you kept you alive kept you healthy it held you up he wants us to have experiences so the the, the faith walk need to be practiced the bible says that faith needs to be tested through the fire because faith is like gold god says it's refined through the through the fire like gold where you've been shaken and stirred and things may look upside down in your circumstances and it looks scary and then you have to face your fear and take up the word again what is god saying about fear hundreds of scriptures fear not i'm with you don't look around and be anxious i'm there so you can choose to believe what god says through your fear or listen to your excuse me listen to your fear back to the church it's not a building that is going to make your life holy not at all the first christians who lived in the catacombs they didn't have a church they maybe met secretly here and there most of the time they were under the earth living there their whole life they just sat in small i've been there small 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 room very low ceiling and they lived there talk about a challenge their whole life <laughs> So this is kind of nothing compared to that but it's a lot in our generation in our time we haven't walked this path before we've been challenged and after this you this you can be moving up to the next level with god your faith can be stronger you shouldn't be afraid of a challenge in life you should let it take you like the eagles up and let the storm take you because you know who you are you need to know who you are now you need to know your identity now have you built your inner man on the word of god or have you just gone to church because it's nice to meet people and you're all saved and how much of god is really has really taken form inside of you. So God can allow that buildings are being taken away from us, that we trust. The church is removed from us. It's a faith test. That's how I see it. How Christian are we? How close to the Holy Spirit are we? Or was it only Sunday or Friday or Wednesday afternoon? Check yourself. I'm doing it. And I hope you are not falling apart. And if you fall apart now, God will build you up piece by piece. Like I said yesterday, God allows things to fall apart to build it up in the right way again. Maybe your motives was not right. Maybe you were a shallow Christian. Maybe you were leaning on others. You were leaning on your church. You're leaning on that, that fellowship. And now you don't have it. You're by yourself. You only have your TV, your computer and your phone to talk to those people. That is good. Believe me. The army God is going to raise up 
It's going to be so mighty, so steadfast, so strong, so powerful, so purified, so holy, so put together. It's going to be no jealousy, no striving, no unbalance, no lacking of faith. The army of God is strong people. They're trained. They know who they are. They're not pushing each other. They're not competing. They're not self-promoting. They're a team. Like I spoke about yesterday, that, that, um, that thing, rampaging, rampaging. It needs to be a team to, 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 to take that big wood thing and push it towards that closed gate. To, to make it open. It's not one person who can do it. It's a team. And we are supposed to be a team. We are supposed to love each other, help each other, encourage each other, stand together like one man and pray together. That's why, you, why your voice is so important and mine and everybody else's because together we are this rampaging thing. We are this army that are coming against the enemy, trained from heaven with another superpower that the world cannot understand. This is what God is refining in us in these days. I believe it. He's refining, he's filtering out our motives. And we have to go on our knees in our houses and our rooms and search our hearts now. Yeah. I'm glad we have pastors and teachers and apostolic people and prophetic people and don't misunderstand me but they are not God they are not the one you should go to first it's Jesus you need to be independent spiritually first and then you can have your church family but you need to know it's about you and God first because at the end you will be standing alone in front of God's throne it's not a big church around you there your pastor is not standing next to you and talking on behalf of behalf of you you are going to stand there in front of God by yourself. Serious. It's important that we don't play church. Have we been playing church, people? Or have we really had a church? Because playing church, I believe it's over that time in, 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 in in our life is over god will not accept people playing church anymore he will reset he will take people out of positions that that thought that they had that place in the body of christ and put you in the right place everybody's important i think we all should build an altar in our homes now make your house to a sanctuary build an altar there I usually lay on the floor in my bedroom sometimes sit in my bed but I have a place in my room where I kneel down it's kind of like an altar where I lay down on my face so I have like a traveling tabernacle with me Wherever I am, I find a spot where I go and meet God, a corner, place in my room. That's my, my holy place with God. And when you, when, you, when you do that, I'm telling you, if you take this seriously, His presence will come. Because you understand that He's holy and you, you, 
you're acting out in a holy way. You have respect. You fear God. What is an altar? Is an extension of your soul. Is a place where we can repent from our sins. And a place where we meet God. Like Moses on Mount Zion. He was up there with God for 40 days and he made an altar there with God. It's a secret place, it's a holy place, it's a place of repentance, it's a place where you kneel down and search your heart. A place where you take your mind away from your flesh, from all the other activities in life your mind away from all the enemy, where the enemy is talking to you, you come before God. It's where you give God all the attention that he deserves, where you sacrifice yourself in front of God, where you leave the natural life and walk into a holy, holy life, spiritual life. And you connect, you connect with your spiritual life. You sacrifice everything, you lay everything down daily for him. Let him point out those things that shouldn't be in your life. Let him show you your motives today. And he will come in with answers to you. He loves us so much. And then the altar is also a place for me where I praise God. I sing, I worship. I've been singing all morning and worshiping God. It's a place where you are acting out like an intercessor. You start praying for other people. And well, God will show you your authority in Him and it's a beautiful, beautiful place, place. God calls us for priests. Are we priests? Do we act like priests? We are holy people to him. We are priests. He's calling into holiness. Back in the days, in the Old Testament, the priests were anointed with oil. That anointing symbolized the anointing of the Holy Spirit that is poured over our heads. It symbolized authority, that anointing that they anointed priests with. It symbolized the glory of God, the power of God. And I'm telling you, if you don't want this life, you don't, if you don't really, really want this change in your life to be spiritually circumcised, you shouldn't touch these things. You shouldn't allow yourself to be transformed. Because you need to want to be transformed. You need him to change you. That needs to be a passion in you. Change me, God. Make me better. Cleanse my heart, my motives, my thoughts. Make me more like you. I want to be a reflection of you here on this earth. You have to bow down because he's holy. He's holy. And then God will pour his oil over you if you let him, if you repent. The spirit of wisdom will come over you. Spirit of understanding. It's a higher in intellect. A divine way of thinking. God's understanding and God's wisdom. It's deep. It's holy. And it's, it's high wisdom divine 
I can just feel it right now when I'm talking about God's holiness. This heavy presence that's here right now, I'm, I'm telling you, I just feel like oil over me right now. I feel God is, he loves that I'm speaking about this now because he consecrate his people now. He's consecrating us. Don't think about the coronavirus. Think about what God is doing in your life, in your personal life, your breakthrough with Him. Let Him remove everything and reset everything in your life. We all need to do that. We all need to come before Him with our open hearts and repent. My walk with Christ is not a, it's not a, a, a game to me. It's not something I do because I don't have anything else to do. It's holy to me. I mean, every day I'm like, God, can I speak to you? Do you have something to say to me? Can I come before you? My prayers, he listened to my prayers and answers my prayers. They, it works. And every time I'm living this way, year by year, I can see how deep he goes in me. Take out stuff, change me constantly. And I just, I'm just surrendering to him. I don't try to be a Christian that looks good, speaks the right words, successful Christian woman. I just want to be a vessel that people can see a little bit of Christ through me, hopefully. Yeah. I want to honor God with my life. He deserved that people. He's holy God. And he deserved that we honor him with our lives. We gave Jesus our lives as a holy sacrifice to him. But don't let it only be words. Really mean it. Live it. I spent so many hours and days and months on my knees and like I said yesterday it's not bragging it's just I come to that place where I just <sighs> surrender to him and then you surrender your fear is walking out the door when you surrender you lean and then you trust and then you don't have any fear you let the divine love in when you surrender you, you let the love in and the fear just moves out of your life because you're his. You don't, you don't belong to yourself anymore. You belong to him. He owns you and he's going to take care of you and he's going to change you and change me and lift us up so we are like him, so we can be the army of God. Right? God bless you. Have a great afternoon and I see you tomorrow. Amen.